Wow, and in, in some ways it, it seems strange to feel like, oh, it's the end of the day. Uh, it, to me, this has been just an incredible day, and Tony and I were sitting next to each other sort of madly scribbling, thinking like, well, what, what on earth do we say <laughs> to sum this up? Um, you know, the amount of expertise that was here and passion that was here and um, solutions that were here was, was just inspiring to me. So I'm, um, I'm going to venture and say that um, for me, a day spent on an extremely difficult topic, and you know, certainly Tony brought that forward uh, very effectively, um, leaving with this sense of hope, uh, you know, truly. And, and, and over and over again, I thought, oh, there, there's a point of light, there's another point of light, and, and this idea of th there are things that are happening um, to address this. Is it broad enough? No. Do enough people know about it? No. Um, but we're all part of a, of a solution here. So I just, a few kind of highlights I'm gonna go through, um, not in any particular order, but, um, so uh, learning and awareness as liberating. You know, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking here at the First Lady of Wisconsin thinking all the people who sit next to her and, and learn and become aware because of, of her passion, um, that we all have a stake in this, you know, and this question of what happened to you not what's the matter with you, not how do I punish you or control you, but what happened to you. Um, that as adults, I love this concept, we have to recognize when our rider is off, right? Great idea. Um, and, I, and I loved all the, all the metaphors you used were great. Tony and I were like, that record one is great. You know, maybe not as timely as it might be, but <laughs> they're coming back. Um, the concept that uh, this is now much broader as a concept than the original ACEs, right? The original ACEs were 10 things that might happen to you essentially in your home and it, how it has become much broader. There was one slide about that, about you know, the sociocultural trauma that we must be aware of despite people who may tell us to pipe down about it or you know, that's too touchy-feely or whatever it is. Those are real things that have to be held as we're talking about this. Um, that people who have suffered trauma need to have a sense of agency built for them. They need that supportive person who can help them realize their worth and that they can uh, get through this. I love the idea of self-regulation and, and co-regulators, right? The idea that that is a lifetime thing. It's not just, oh, this is something you have to teach kids in a critical period from zero to five. No, we all have this. And I actually, I texted one of my colleagues and I said, you are one of my co-regulators. Because <laughs> I just realized, it was like, oh, she's in the room. She knows who she is. <laughs> um, the idea that we want to give people voice and choice. Um, you know, from, from, from Tony Kane, this, this, uh, this potential for even in the most devastating of circumstances to overcome, right? To heal and to break the cycle, as she said so powerfully. Um, there are 55 languages spoken in Oakland. I work in Oakland. I had no idea there were 55 languages spoken in the Oakland schools. So talk about the, the need for sociocultural awareness and cultural humility. Um, that one in five people, not just adults, not just kids, uh, spend their day in a school. Like schools is an incredibly powerful center to do this work. And yet a sense too that, um, not that schools are too late, but that they're a little further down the pike than we might like. And, and how do we move into parenting? How do we move into pre-parenting um, uh, are, are, are great challenges for us. Um, that, of course, in schools, it's, it's so easy and compelling to think about kids, and that may be the way in and the way you get policymakers' attention and funds and things like that, but we have to think about the teachers. We have to think about the staff, because everybody is involved in this. Um, investing upstream with accountability. Uh, and then, of course, another high point for me is, you know, do we want to live in a country of fear? Or do we want to live in a country of love, right? A former Surgeon General said those <laughs> words sitting here, and it's not necessarily what you expect from a, a former government official, but it's profound. Um, 
and then left, you know, also in, in, in some sense with, with the most hope are the solutions that we heard, right? This was not a forum where we came and we said, boy, we really got to, we got to tackle this. What are we going to do? Uh, I don't know. We need more research. Or what? You know, time after time, we heard about programs that are already working, whether they are in Oakland or Maryland or Oregon or L.A. or Wisconsin or at the federal government, SAMHSA programs, CHIP, providing insurance for kids. There's a lot of positive going on in this area, so we should not leave despairing, and we should not leave over-focused on whatever the latest news is out of Washington, D.C., because this country is a lot more than the center of the federal government, right? It really is communities, homes, schools, all those places where these positive things are happening. So I will now leave the stage and... Uh, Ask Tony to speak. Thanks, Don. So, um, Don touched on many of the things that really affected me as I was listening to the conversation as well. I wanted to go first. You did well. Um, I, I had written a bunch of new to me ideas on, on the list, and you hit many of them. I love the co regulation um, concept, which takes what can be a negative, I think, concept and flip it over into something that is more constructive than the way people often interact with each other. Um, so I, I thought that was quite, quite excellent. I love the idea of whole children and you know whole communities. That that was wonderful as well. I thought strategic abandonment, um, you know, only you know, that's that's definitely um, something we have to think about. It sounds traumatic, but it's actually useful. Um, and then Doug, the Goldilocks, you know, notion of the right level of stress because. Um, you know, the purpose in life can't be to eliminate stress. I mean, we, we need stress to grow. We need the right amount of stress. And then at the same time, we need um, people around us to help us build the resilience that we need in order to make the most of, of the stressors that exist, which is wonderful. Joyce, I'm sorry you win the metaphor award of the year for all of that stuff. I love the riders and horses. Um, see, you sa already said that, Don, but I, I needed to reflect on it too. And then Tony's story, I thought, um, you know, it's, it's horrifying, um, but the brilliance that can transcend the horror, I think, was so beautifully um, on display today. I think it was a, it was a tremendous gift to have her here um, and, and share her story. Um, and, you know, really talking about how hope and service can be where we go with what we need to do. Um, the excellent Oakland has been referenced. Um, you know, I, I think... Um, Chelsea, you had some great points around the workforce and how, and, and a number of people talked about the, the need to integrate taking care of the workforce and the ability to take care of the people they're trying to take care of. And only by building systems where we do both of those is really where we're going to go. So, on, you know, from a policy, the, you know, theme here, um, we will do some work collecting all of the things that we've had. Sam, you're not going to get off the hook by me magically synthesizing everything that we heard today. That'll be a bunch of work that has to go on. But a few thoughts um, at the outset, I think, I think to share. One, um, and, and Ellen, this was, I think, your point toward the end, um, which I think is a really important macro point, which is that, that this area and this idea is getting a lot of traction right now. Um, and it's compelling. And it is something that can be, is a story that can be told to people of all types of thinking of, of, because everyone experiences this in their lives. And staying the course is really critical. Um, that not getting distracted by the next thing that comes along, this is the thing. And we need to make sure that policymakers stay focused on this being the thing um, and not getting pulled off on other things, which, which could happen. Um, but we're, we're getting, there's traction in this space. It's, in some respects, it's about designing the appropriate, creating the, pol the public support. We heard a lot about that. And then designing programs that are meaningful and, and um, responsive to the need and can demonstrate um, good outcomes. Um, clear focus throughout the conversation on, on moving upstream, taking the vast amounts of resources that are in the health system and figuring out how to apply some of them upstream. One would hope eventually that will pay for itself. Um, and that's a question of time and, and energy. Um, the, the notion of focusing, as I was saying about the points that Chelsea made, workforce, staffing, capacity, training, um, 
you know, the frontline staff is where this stuff happens. We need to figure out how to make sure the right people, um, the, the people with the right sets of skills are in place, defining what they need to be doing, defining what they're there for, and making sure that as a society we are resourcing it adequately. There's a huge amount of work to do um, from a policies perspective on training and, and just putting resources into education. Um, taking, making sure that funding is appropriately drawn from different, different sources. One of the main themes of the conversation today was cross-functionality. Um, we need to make sure cross-functionality often dies on sources of funding, um, and that is why everybody in these spaces you know, really needs to be reaching across into the other silos and making sure that the others are being thought about when things are being funded. Um, and, and there's some good stuff going on there. We heard about accountability measures, and actually there was a lot of optimism and a recognition that there's a pathway for that already. Um, and so continuing to make sure that the good research that's going on demonstrates the outcomes and ties to um, the work um, that's already in place. We, we already heard there's excellent research that's demonstrating the effectiveness of many of these interventions. Um, you know, people who don't think about this every day but have a broader policy scope need to be taught about that. Um, and don't let it just be assumed away. And also don't assume that policymakers intuitively know that what's good is good, um, as it is. We heard collaboration, again, cross-functionality at the federal, state, and local levels. That app is essential to any of these programs going on. Um, another theme was relationships, both in the development of programs and in the policymaking process. Um, I, was, I was reflecting on the fact that it's is true, and maybe even, it's at least as true, in, in the policy space as it is in the therapeutic space, that there needs to be enough vulnerability and trust built up that we can actually make progress. We have to transcend the assumptions that we're making about folks who may have different ideas. Um, and that requires vulnerability and trust um, in a policy environment as well. Um, and then so there were some great nuts and bolts ideas that were, were um, lifted up in the last session as well. We'll try to capture all of those. The one that stuck with me was in the foster care system. Just the basic idea of what we take for granted um, in intact families and access to care does not exist in the foster care system, and we need to build something that actually provides for that. So I, th I actually thought there were a whole host of really excellent ideas in that last session, and we will, Sam will pull all of those together for all of us, and in the reporting out for this meeting, we'll try to capture that as much as possible. So, you know, in conclusion, I think it, it was just, I, I learned a, an enormous amount today. I thought many of the presentations were incredibly compelling. Um, and this is just the beginning of, of where we're going to go with, um, you know, as a group, hopefully we will have all met more um, interested colleagues with each other and, and continue to stay um, engaged and, and very interested in where we're going from here. So thanks for all of that. And, Ceci, I'm going to turn it to you to close. So thank you, everybody, for hanging in there till the end of the day. Um, I did want to revisit our word cloud from this morning, though. Um, folks may remember we did the poll in the morning. Um, and so I wanted to just take a look at it and see if we were able to hit on the topics that you were interested in hearing about earlier this morning. So how do people think we did? Good. Oh, I see some thumbs up. Excellent. OK, great. Good. So we would like to do another poll. Um, um, so if we could turn to the next slide. So I think the, the poll we'd like to do is if you could give us one word to describe the day. So the polling information is at your desk or for folks who participated. Um, hopefully it's easy to log on and go ahead and send that. But um, one word to describe the day. These are great words. Thank you.
These are great. Will we get copies of this? I'd love to share them with the, the speakers as well that weren't able to stay for the whole day. Wonderful. Thank you all. This is great. This is happy feedback. So thank you for that. Um, I think we do have one more poll, um, which is what next steps would you like us to take? So what next steps would you like us at Kaiser Permanente to take in this issue? So once action, policy, advocate. Oh, someone wants the list of attendees. We can do that. <laughs> we can do that. Policy development. Start a state caucus. Policy. Great. Thank you all. Education. So again, we'll keep these lists and take a look at them. Please keep sending your thoughts in. Um, so I would like to encourage this group, if you're not already, to sign up for the Institute for Health Policy newsletter. We will be sharing information about the event via our newsletter. So feel free to give us your email address um, uh, if you're not already receiving that on a monthly basis. Um, I do want to thank all of our speakers and the moderators for doing a fantastic job and really producing, I think, one of our best um, IHP forums to date. So um, thank you, all of you, for doing that. Um, I do also want to thank a number of people that helped produce this event. I'd like to thank Ridgewell Catering, who helped out with our food and snack and beverage needs. Yay. Um, Spark Street Digital, which has been helping us for the past few forums and has always done an amazing job, so thank you to them. I would like to thank Aaron Van Leuven for helping out today and being available in the case that anyone wanted to connect with her. So really appreciate you being here for the day. Um, I also would like to thank Jim Nuttall, who is our graphic note taker in the back, who has done an amazing job capturing the day. And images, um, those images will be available on our website as well. We do have a work group and a steering committee that has worked hard over the last few months to help us define these events as we've put them together. So I want to thank all of those folks, the Center for Total Health staff as well. I want to thank all of you for attending. And if you haven't already, please fill out your survey and just go ahead and leave it on the table and we'll collect that. Our next forum will be in September and it will focus on the mental health workforce, which was came up quite a bit today. So um, we'll take notes from what we heard from you today and try and incorporate that into the day in September. So thank you all. <laughs>